your topic is agriculture and human nutrition. How loud that topic. I, I would, good morning. Wanakkam. <laughs> My dear friend Peter, I call him Peter the Love. And Noni family members, outsiders if any, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am here mainly because of Peter. I like this man. You know one thing? His body language. He has discipline in life. I am yet to see Peter without the suit and the tie. Except one day I saw Peter without his suit and tie. That was when my wife died. I didn't know how he came to know about it. And we were uh, about to, you know, um, cremate the body. And Peter appears in my house in Mangalore in a shirt and a trouser. That was my shock because I never, I, th I thought it can't be Peter because Peter is always with the suit. Do you know what it shows? Discipline in life, which we all need to emulate. We ape the West in so many bad things, but we don't get their good things. And one of the good things that you can get from West is discipline. I still appreciate the way, you know, so when the conference starts, lecture starts at 11.30, the invitation will be, you are invited for the lecture at 11 for 11.30, which means if you go before 11, the door won't be open. If you go after 11.30, the door will be shut. But we don't have that. We have the IST, Indian Stretchable Time. It goes on and on and on. Pradhan Saab, a very great agricultural scientist, and Tyagarajan Saab, another great researcher in biotechnology, Chairman Sirs. The topic, actually, I think uh, Ratnam asked me, oh, the topic is very good. How did you choose it? I said, I don't know. They chose it. <laughs> I came to know about the topic only yesterday. When I was in Mysore University for a convocation, this letter came on the email and said, your topic is agriculture and human nutrition. How loud that topic. I, I wouldn't have thought about it, but I loved that topic. Well, it all started. Nutrition and health was the problem for this universe for the last four billion years. The usual biology that you all studied in school and college with the Mendelian, Darwinian inheritance theory has all been given up. Neither Mendel was right nor was Darwin right. But the new biology, evolutionary biology, a lot of work is done. We showed that this universe, this what you call the planet Earth, was inhabited by germs for 2 billion years, the first 2 billion years. Actually, if you observe the world, Mars, Moon, they're all inhabited by germs only to begin with. Now, these germs were like us, hating each other, fighting one another, trying to cut, undercut somebody, backbite somebody, etc., etc. And they found quickly, nearly 1 billion years they found, this only destroys them. As Gandhiji said, if you have an eye for an eye philosophy, at the end there will be no... People, all will be blind. So the germ said, to survive, we must love one another and we must provide for others. And that was the biggest agriculture laboratory they started, which no scientist worth this salt can do that. What did they do? They used carbon dioxide, they used water vapor and the sun's energy to make chlorophyll, the green leaf, which is the basis of all life on this planet even today. You may say, no, no, I am a non-vegetarian. I couldn't care less for the green leaf. You are a non-vegetarian thanks to the green leaf. Somebody will say, oh, no, no, I am in Chennai. I will only live on fish. The big fish eats the small fish. Small fish eats the smaller fish. The smallest fish eats plankton, which is a green leaf. So without a green leaf, nothing. Only thing is, if you are a non-vegetarian, you are very expensive. Because you require a lot of area for the animal to be raised before you eat it. So it is not a very economical proposition in this world where money is the ruling the roost. I think non-vegetarian food is not a good idea. Let us not go into that. Anyway, that's not our concern today. What happened to the world then? So we had nutrition at that time. But the germs had another problem. 
they had used up all the exhaled carbon dioxide and they produced a universe full of oxygen and oxygen poisoning was killing them left right and center and that has taught we doctors today a lesson that oxygen is dangerous you would have seen some years ago when you were young probably when you go to a movie anybody gets a heart attack in the cinema the first thing is is given some oxygen right that's what we used to do for nearly 50 years and killed millions of people when you get a heart attack you do not do not require oxygen because oxygen will kill the heart further oxygen is a poison what you require is hypoxia and our rishis and our ancestors knew about it you know in, up in the himalayas people live 120 years 130 years hunzrus in uzbekistan russia lot of these people who live in high altitude live long because high altitude is very little oxygen you and i live in chennai 100% oxygen and we didn't live load didn't live that, that long 